thousands of Chinese military personnel in Shanghai amid a rising virus surge. The global financial hub now on the front lines in Beijing's uncompromising battle to eradicate the virus. Chinese Communist Party authorities are taking two-month-old babies away from their parents. Now questions over the reason for it. A new subvariant of Omicron emerges in China, not far from Shanghai. The concern now, is this a new danger? How hostile is the Chinese Communist Party towards the U.S.? Chinese state media hold clues. And for those watching our full episode, is China helping Russia with its invasion into Ukraine? Ukraine's intelligence made public just before the China and European Union summit. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. When it comes to China's strict zero case virus policy and its most populous city, the country's leaders seem to have made it clear Shanghai can't fail. On Monday, 40,000 military and medical personnel arrived in Shanghai to test its 26 million residents. The plan comes as the city reported more than 9,000 new infections on Sunday, the highest daily count to date. Now, under the fast-spreading outbreak in Shanghai, Beijing's strict virus elimination strategy is making a name for itself in the city. That is, more testing, mandatory lockdowns, and controversial isolation policies that sees babies separated from their parents if they test positive. On top of that, with zero-case lockdowns in Shanghai, those with other diseases are struggling to survive due to isolation measures. The residents said officials prevented the patient from going outside for dialysis. On top of challenges on the medical front, residents are also facing challenges in another area, food. Aid from other Chinese provinces found rotting away inside trucks after no officials in Shanghai accepted the goods. The man arrived in Shanghai in the morning with a truck full of vegetables from Shandong province. He told Shanghai authorities over the phone that he came here to help, but he is now being ignored and vegetables worth around $20,000 are about to rot. And he himself doesn't have food or water. For weeks, the city has been roiled by dysfunction, with locked down residents left desperately seeking medical care and other basic supplies and others grappling with the heavy costs of the stringent measures, like the poor living conditions in the isolation wards for the infected. But if residents are hoping the measures would end soon, a visiting official seems to have dashed those hopes. China's Vice Premier Sun Chunlan arrived in Shanghai over the weekend. Her arrival left little doubt on Beijing's position in dealing with the virus. Sun has spearheaded China's virus control efforts throughout the pandemic. On Sunday, she stressed that Shanghai must adhere to China's zero COVID policy without any, quote, hesitation or wavering. China's zero COVID policy is the regime's strategy to eradicate the virus with mass testing, lockdowns and isolation anytime one positive case is detected. It's in contrast to many countries which have adopted living with the virus in low numbers. As the strict virus measures are expected to last for a while in Shanghai, China affairs analyst Tang Jingyuan warns the situation may signal a larger issue. This kind of epidemic prevention has nothing to do with medical science. It's about politics. Tang says basically China is using the crisis to boost its international status. Epidemic prevention has become a matter of competition between two political systems. The CCP needs to rely on this to show its epidemic prevention model is superior to that of the West, to prove what they advertise as the rise of the East and the fall of the West. According to Tang, the zero-case policy is a narrative battle between China and the U.S. That refers to the challenge of democracies in the West managing the crisis in full public view versus authoritarian states like China imposing lockdowns with stringent measures and lack of transparency.
But Tang adds, as China now faces an economic slowdown, public anger and social unrest, Beijing may see its so-called advantages in dealing with the virus disappear. It seems testing positive for COVID-19 isn't bad enough for these little ones. They are put in quarantine without their parents because policy in Shanghai says they have to be separated. The youngest seen was not even two months old. Parents are less than happy. NTD's Don Ma has the story. Just how strict is China's zero COVID policy? If you're a parent and you test negative, but your child tests positive, Chinese authorities will forcibly separate you from your child and put them in a quarantine facility without you. This is what's happening to many parents in Shanghai amid the lockdown. China expert and host of Epoch TV's China Insider, David Zhang, says it's inhumane. I think it's absolutely devastating for things like these to be happening in China. Lockdowns in China have turned into uh, a secondary humanitarian crisis. Sources say authorities had taken away hundreds of small children, all of them quarantined separate from their parents. They're put in Shanghai's Jinshan district. People call it Jinshan Infant Quarantine Facility. Videos and photos circulating online show what it looks like there. A photo shows three babies packed in one bed, and rows of beds are lined up in a lobby with many kids. Very few have adults with them. A mother had the chance to get into this quarantine site. According to her, some kids are only two years old. Even a 58-day-old baby was taken away from its parents and placed here alone. And hygiene conditions are terrible. She said when babies soil themselves, there's not even a place to go to to wash them. She estimated that upstairs alone, there were about 200 kids, and only 10 nurses were there taking care of them. But why is China going to such extremes to try to get to zero virus cases? David Zhang says it's about Xi Jinping's image. As a totalitarian leader, it's very hard for him to walk back any decisions he's made. Xi Jinping is seeking to get a third term, and if Xi Jinping were to reveal that he failed, then that would be a large mistake for for the uh, opponents to grab onto to try to stop him from getting uh, his third term. As public backlash grows stronger, Shanghai authorities are saying they will improve management and, quote, strengthen communication with the children's parents. Don Ma, NTD News. Western diplomats have expressed concern about separating children from their parents. Diplomats from more than 30 countries have written to the Chinese foreign ministry, urging authorities not to take such measures. A letter written by the French consulate in Shanghai reads, quote, under no circumstances should parents and children be separated. The British embassy in Beijing said it was concerned that minors were being separated from their parents. In a city about 40 miles from Shanghai, a new Omicron subvariant has been detected. The city CDC first released the information on Saturday. According to China State Television, the subvariant was isolated from a mild case in China's Xuzhou. It doesn't match any others in China's domestic database or the international variant tracking database. Shizhou CDC stressed that virus sequencing takes time and they will update any new findings. The last new subvariant that caught the public's attention was detected in the UK in January. It's known as XE. British health authorities said at the time that XE appeared to be 10% more transmissible than the most contagious Omicron subvariant found thus far. But they added it's too early to know. The Chinese regime says it wants to maintain a normal trade relationship with the U.S. But how does the Chinese Communist Party actually view its top rival? Chinese netizens have pieced together a number of video clips from Chinese state media. They discover that Chinese state media outlets have given the U.S. eight labels. Three are related to the pandemic. They are the worst country in the world when it comes to fighting the pandemic, the country most responsible for spreading the pandemic, and the most turbulent country in the world during the pandemic. Two more of the labels are related to politics. They say number one in the world when it comes to blaming others for its own faults and the most politically divided country in the world. 
Chinese state media also slammed the U.S. as the world's number one country for disinformation, terrorism and currency manipulation. Netizens from what's known as the Great Translation Movement, or TGTM, compiled this video and translated it into English. Chinese netizens launched the movement to counter the Communist Party's propaganda efforts. Under it, they are translating Chinese state media articles and video clips into English and other languages. Their goal is to show the outside world the regime's true stance towards the West. Now turning to America, a group of senators is trying to stop the Chinese Communist Party from spying on Americans. This as high-profile espionage cases emerge and a major decision by the Biden administration comes under scrutiny. NTD's Iris Tao has more. Countering espionage by Beijing. That's what Senator Rick Scott, along with five other Republican senators, say their latest legislation is trying to do. Of sending spies to our country to steal sensitive research and trade secrets. Following earlier discussions on China's threat, Senator Rick Scott on Thursday introduced the Protect America's Innovation and Economic Security from CCP Act. It aims to re-establish the China Initiative at the Department of Justice. The program, established in 2018, seeks to prevent spying by the Chinese Communist Party on American soil. What the Communist Party of China is doing is they want to control our lives. But the Biden administration ended the China Initiative in February, replacing it with what are called a broader strategy. These efforts are really just the tip of the iceberg. The call comes amid heightened alert on the long arm of the Chinese regime. Just weeks ago, the DOJ charged five people with acting on behalf of Beijing to stalk, harass and spy on Chinese dissidents in the U.S., including a congressional candidate in New York. For decades, the Chinese Communist Party has targeted, harassed and threatened U.S.-based Tibetans, Uyghurs, Falun Gong members and pro-democracy activists. And now, as if that weren't offensive enough, the government of China has targeted the campaign of a candidate for Congress. Next, we'd like to address one of our audience's frequently asked questions. Some have written to us wondering why the Chinese Communist Party persecutes Falun Gong, a spiritual meditation practice. The Chinese regime has been persecuting Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa, for 23 years, since summer 1999. Those who practice the system are abducted, imprisoned, detained in labor camps, tortured, and even suffer forced organ harvesting. Their deaths are largely known to supply China's booming organ transplant market. But why did Beijing launch the persecution campaign? Before it began, Falun Gong saw wild popularity throughout China, spread through word of mouth. At its peak, 100 million people were practicing there, a number higher than the Communist Party's membership roster. The party views any group bigger than itself as a threat to its rule. On top of that, Falun Gong teaches the principles of truthfulness, compassion and tolerance, and puts importance on improving moral character. These values differ greatly from what the regime stands for. Top party authorities fear that if many people follow Falun Gong's principles, they will reject the CCP, as well as its communist ideology and state-sanctioned atheism. Despite that thinking, Falun Gong has no political goals and doesn't belong to a political party. The meditation practice is one of what Chinese tradition calls energy practices or Qigong practices. Dozens of energy practices are banned in China. Other forms of spirituality are also suppressed, including religious beliefs like Christianity and Buddhism. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We are now sharing a shortened version of our program on YouTube. Full episodes can be watched on our partner platform Epoch TV. Please click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer and see you tomorrow. Every once in a while, something comes along so masterful, it leaves you in awe. So inspiring, it changes your life. 
so beautiful, you wish it would never end. When that happens, it's something not to be missed. Shen Yun, an all new production every year. The performance was enchanting. I feel better about the world. I feel uplifted. It touches you. It really does. The expertise of the dancers was really, really strong. To know that it was live music was really fantastic. We didn't want to miss this. Make sure you see it. Have to come. Life-changing.